Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today I want to talk about pumpkins and watermelons. And this even applies to uh, your squash zucchini, your winter squash. How do you keep them healthy? What are a couple of tips? Now you can see this is a Blue Prince pumpkin growing all through here. Up at the top there are cantaloupe. They need a lot of space. They want to sprawl out. So you have to give them to start what they want. And this is a pretty large section. I'm letting it overgrow, doing an experiment. That'll be a future video. But this is a no-dig garden. I'm letting the uh, tomatoes just sprawl. I'm letting the pumpkins sprawl. But the pumpkins have the space they need. And this is really important because of the vine borer. And this is also true for watermelons and other vining crops. Is they want to sprawl along the ground. And you can see in these joints, root systems pop out. Let's see if we can pull this one up. And they dig into the ground right from this space here. Here's one that's starting to come out and it's just digging in. You want to encourage that. So you want your pumpkin plants, your watermelon plants to be sprawling across the ground and have soil, this is compost, or something they can grow into. If you have these growing across a deck or something else, they're not going to be able to do this. And this really defends them against the vine borer. If the vine borer gets in and digs into where the original stem meets the root system, you don't have all these all over. The vine borer kills the plant at that stem. Your plant's going to die off. So you really want to encourage all of this growth along the stem. And you can do that by just placing compost or loose soil around the area and they're going to grow into that. And that will pay dividends. You want that to happen. You can see it coming right in there too. You also want to inspect the leaves. Where you have lots of leaves, you're going to have insects on the underside. That's squash bugs. And you can see, let's make sure I get that, all those eggs. You can rub them off, let them fall to the ground. Insects will eat them or remove the leaves. So you want to make sure your vine is crawling across ground so that it can root into the ground. And you really want to come and inspect the leaves regularly. You're looking for the undersides, those types of eggs. You're looking for powdery mildew. There's no mildew on here. Powdery mildew will spread across here really quickly when the conditions are right. So because I'm not eating these pumpkins are going to be for decoration. I don't mind using a product like Dacanil on there as the antifungal. It stays on the leaf and it's not going to wash off when it rains. And it's really, really effective against powdery mildew. And pumpkins, watermelons, cantaloupe, squash, they're notorious for getting that. And it can spread through your plants really, really quickly. Now, if I'm going to be eating the plant, well, if I'm going to be eating, well, I guess the plant, but if I'm going to be eating the vegetable that it grows, then I use something like Serenade, I'll use neem oil, I'll use baking soda spray, but those things often have to be applied more. And if you have a field of pumpkins, you really don't want to be spraying every three or four days, you know. So get a antifungal that is more water resistant and doesn't wash off in the rain. That's up to you. But you are going to want to treat this for the powdery mildews. You are going to want to inspect the undersides of the leaves. Now, you can also open up the space when you see, you know, this is pretty good. I've been removing leaves here and there. You really want to open it up. Let the air flow through. The pollinators will get in there. Birds will get in there. They'll eat the bed insects. But you start looking for spots where you might have a leaf in the way. And you can just... Pop the leaf off, open it up. You know, when you pull a leaf out, inspect it, see if anything is growing on there. Those were some eggs that I removed earlier. And just let the air flow through. All right, let's go take a look at the watermelons. Well, let's stop at the uh, squash and zucchini first. So these are plants that I've cut back pretty harshly. I will link that video. And they're coming back in full force. All the new leaves are coming in. They look great. And again, you want to inspect, and I'm going across the tops of the leaves, and there are some squash bugs. And usually if you find them in one place, they're going to be in other places. And for some reason, the squash bugs are making it really easy for me because they are laying the eggs on the top sides of the leaves, which is pretty cool. So here's a better example 
of the main stems coming out of the ground. You want to inspect along here, squeeze them. If they're getting soft, it's probably a vine borer in there. And you can actually get in there, cut out the vine borer, or you can stab it. Now, when they're solid, oh, so right in here, there's a vine borer. So on this side, you can see that green. So there's something in here that I'm not going to be able to twist this plant and get to it. But you can see, wow, good timing. I'm just digging in there. So what I'll do, and you can see the slime on there, that's because something is chewing the inside of the stem. You could get uh, a nail and just poke in there, stab it. But same principle, now that I know that's there, take handfuls of dirt, pack it around here, and I'll come back with some of my better compost and really press this in. Now, I may not have gotten the vine borer out of there, but this is going to root out and it's going to save this plant. You also want to look for something like this. So here is another stem coming out and you'd want to direct that to the ground and as it got longer, you want to mound over it too. That will help the roots come in to different places. Here's an example. Right in here, you can see this one comes up and it's trailing along there. So I don't know if you can see that, but right here are some new roots coming out. So let me just move it around so you can get a better look. I want to encourage that. So I'm going to really build the soil up under here, let the roots grow in to the ground from here. And that will set up the root system there. And maybe this will survive and the root system will be in there. So that is one way you can really manage damage from the vine borers. I'm glad I actually found that. So here's how you identify if you have a vine borer down at the stem. Aside from inspecting and looking for that, that rotting area, that chewing on the um, main stem, when your leaves start to droop for no reason, you know that they're watered. Again, it's early morning. All the other plants we looked at had nice, strong leaves. These are drooping. That's because it had a vine borer in there uh, that I caught maybe four or five days ago. The older vine is all beat up. The leaves are still drooping. You can see them all in there. Some of them look okay. And this plant is actually starting to come back. Down here off a branch of the, uh, the main area, these leaves look pretty good. So about five days ago, there are two plants in here. I mounded up the soil just to get those roots growing like I showed you. And this is a kind of an emergency way, if you notice it, that you can save your plant. Now, hopefully that roots out. You keep it watered. You can have to water it every day. You want that mound to stay really moist and the new root system will come out. You can see, so this stem is surviving. The ones coming out of here are surviving. They're the ones that look great. And this one looks like it's gone. Actually, we'll just pull it out. But see how it's all rotted? It just didn't take. So half the plant on the left over there is going to die off, but it looks like the other ones are surviving. And at least I have new vines coming out of here. The mounding isn't a cure-all, but it works in an emergency. And that's the devastation the vine borer does. So here's another example. This is a uh, squash plant and it's vining and you can see the vine coming out from down there. I inspected it. I don't see any damage and it is trailing out this way. So what you could do, look at that pollinator in there. What you could do is get in here, remove these leaves that are coming out, get that stem pressed to the ground, mound over it and let it root in. You can see a little cucumber beetle moving right through there. So by opening up the space, like I've removed a lot of leaves, new leaves will come out, good insects can get in there, I can inspect this easily and manage it. And you can see that it's still producing nicely. Also if you want to dust, this doesn't really work for pumpkins and melons because they're so massive you'd have to dust everywhere, but you could put insect dust right along that stem and that will help stop the vine borer too. And you can see as the plant grows, the flowers progress down the vine 
and you can just remove the leaves and the stems from that main vine and dust along there. So here's another zucchini plant and it's about 7.30 in the morning. That's when you want to come out because you're going to find the different insects crawling around and you want to just, you know, look at the leaves. Here's a new insect that I don't know what that is, you know, but I want to check it out before I kill it. It could be good, it could be bad. But you just again want to take a look at the plant. These have been pruned back pretty severely and they're just doing extremely well come seven, ten days later. I will I'll put that video in the description and at the end screen just so you can see what they look like. But they look pretty good, nice and healthy. The biggest thing you can probably do for squash, zucchini, and pumpkins is to make sure you're watering them regularly. Regularly, They need a good inch of water, which means you have to know how long your hose has to run to put out an inch of water, so it's one inch per square foot. So you saw how the pumpkin had root systems coming out in different parts of the vine. You want to water that whole area, maybe a sprinkler. But you're going to have to do this maybe every other day when the temperatures are 95 degrees. They love water. You want to give them plenty of water so that they flourish, not just survive. Like lots of plants can survive on one inch of water a week, but that's not what you're going for. You want massive growth of the pumpkins or the watermelons. You have to keep the water consistent. And that's probably one of the biggest mistakes people make is they just water once or twice a week in these high heat days of 90 plus degrees. This is one area where I'm growing watermelons and this is a pretty good sized vine. The melons do stay around six to eight pounds. That's probably the maximum size I would go with for trellising because they're going to get really heavy. You can see two nice melons forming right there and a whole key I think with melons is keeping that water consistent. These are in a raised bed. These are getting watered every other day, every third day if it's not you know 95 plus but you have to keep the water going for your pumpkins and your melons so you can see the vine is spreading out across here now melons will also vine if or will root out if I cover out certain sections they don't do it as quickly and as naturally as the pumpkin plants so I like to be able to get into where the stems are meeting the ground and I put insect dust in there and you want to make sure you remove flowers that you're not affecting the pollinators any insect dust uh, human-made chemical, organic chemical, they will kill any insect. They're uh, indiscriminate killers. So you have to use them wisely. The biggest issue I have, and that's probably the other tip, is know what problems come to your uh, watermelons and your pumpkins in your area. For me, these get powdery mildew and leaf problems. So you again want to spray them regularly, have a routine, and that means spraying every 7 to 14 days with whatever product you want to use. And that's what you want to come out and just kind of look around and make sure there's no powdery mildew or, or fungus starting. And that will really go a long way in taking care of your watermelon plants. It's taking care of the, fung the fungus, the fungi that grow on there. Now in some areas you may not have that issue. Here's another melon plant that I'm growing up a trellis and you just weave it in and out. So we have a couple of things. You want to be consistent with the watering. That's probably the biggest mistake. You want to encourage root growth from the vines of your pumpkins and your melon plants. You want to inspect regularly and you want to preventatively spray for the fungal diseases that come. Okay, let's go back out to where we started. Your squash and zucchini will mature in 45 days, really quickly in the summer. So you can put in different rotations of those plants. I do that regularly. I have maybe three rotations going in. So the plants that are beat up now, I put seeds in, it's the end of July. They will do their thing and I'll be able to pick end of August into September. So I'll get more squash and zucchini. Your pump, yeah, your pumpkins, your watermelon take a lot of time. And if they, you know, get three quarters of the way through and die off, you miss out and you can't replant. So you really want to make sure you give your pumpkins plenty of space. It's really important that they're able to root out in different places. And again, it's pretty cool because as this plant is creeping out, overtaking these tomatoes, you can see that it's just dropping the root down again. So it's going to take care of itself. So if I take care of the fungal issues, the squash bugs, some other insects, this plant's going to make it and it's going to do a lot. 
you know, um, in a way of production for me. Think real quick, you know, standing over there, what do we have here? Another cluster of eggs I saw. So really opening up the space lets you get in and look around and see what's going on. So to wrap up, the other thing is feeding. You want to prepare the planting areas for your melons and your pumpkins with a lot of organic matter. If you have compost, please use that. That's the best stuff you can do. You want a lot of it, several inches worked into the soil. Organic granular fertilizer, you know, a handful spread every couple of feet. Mix that in. They're going to feed heavily, so you want to take care of them. This is a no-dig garden, and this is all built on compost. So these haven't been fed a whole lot except for what's there, and you can see how well they're doing. But you want to feed your pumpkins and melons at least every two weeks, especially when they get to this size. A fish emulsion, water-soluble fertilizer really goes a long way. Um, you can sprinkle in some organic fertilizer. You can sprinkle in some more compost mid-season, but you really want to spend the time preparing the area so they're getting all the food that they need out of that. And again, that's a lot of compost, organic fertilizer set up for growing. They're heavy, heavy, heavy feeders. Can't stress that enough. But these plants are doing really well. These are just some tips to help you be successful growing pumpkins and melons. Nothing worse than getting 75, 85, 90 days into growing you know, a vining crop like this, and then fungus or insects take it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. I also have a new book coming out called The Modern Homestead Garden. If you want to check that out in the video description.